as all of you know, I'm Ben, uh, and this talk about internships and how they can help students gain experience in IT. Uh, this is from my own personal experience, not others. Um, so it's as I've experienced it and not how it could potentially be for your, for like a future case for you guys. But I strongly recommend them. Let's start with that. Anyone want to try and decode that? You be quiet, you know it's there. I told you it's there. <laughs> so yeah, it, it says echo, hello world in X, um, but it is convert to binary first. So about me, I'm a first year student here at Napier. Uh, I'm, Fordophone, I'm a former Fordophone Group Cyber Prevent intern, uh, where I assisted in building their lab network, helped develop map, uh, dashboards for monitoring for his team over there. Obviously, camera, Gary Hoskin. Um, he runs their CERT team. Uh, I treated first aid in the Manchester terror attack back in 2017, and I came fifth overall participating on a SAN CTF against pen testers, forensics analysts, and threat hunters. And my team overall came second. So just brief, briefly about the Manchester attack, uh, I treated, treated first aid, uh, I assisted in ensuring the safety of the people who were lost, managed to get to where they needed to be, uh, and to regroup with their family. Uh, got taken to a police car, that's a very fun story that, yeah, <laughs> we shouldn't probably go on about, one to one, maybe. Uh, and I've got PTSD, PTSD, insomnia, and tinnitus from it. So before the actual internship, I built under the supervision of one of my uh, now close friends, but at the time he was a mentor sort of figure, who is an apprentice for Vodafone. He's called Connor. Uh, we built a lab network using PFSense and VMware EXSI on both boxes. The two boxes, as you can see in the picture, although the photo is bad, um, both connected into each other, one's a firewall for the other. Um, and yes, I have B uh, BB-8 watching to make sure that they stay functioning properly. And should any of it go wrong, BB-8 fixing it, not me. It's on, it's on him. Uh, so Connor also worked with me while I was in uh, Vodafone and as an intern. So what is an internship? Uh, so from the Oxford Dictionary, when I checked it, it says an internship is a way to gain a better understanding of practices used in an industry environment. So some of the takeaways that you could potentially come from this talk is what is an internship, as I've just said, uh, what experiences I've had, uh, if you ever want to like come have a talk to me about it, great starting point, possibly. Uh, how it's potentially helped me going forward in my life and what you could potentially learn from an internship experience. So about my internship, uh, it was with Vodafone. Uh, the Department of Cyber Prevent which, and Network and Telco. So cyber, uh, cyber as a whole is split into two. We've got Cyber Defense and Cyber Prevent. The Prevent team are building these ways to prevent like, the security measures. So we're setting up firewalls, we're maintaining the security. Meanwhile, cyber defense are telling us how badly we're potentially doing in, in parts because they're the ones working out when a threat has actually happened and took place, when an incident has occurred, what went wrong, how to resolve it, and potentially um, the pen testing team are testing our systems. So then also telling us when we're messing up. Great, great sort of environment to work in. Uh, technically, as you can see, my role was technology advisor to Vodafone Group, which I am very proud of. That is just how, think how big Vodafone Group is, or just Vodafone as a whole, and I was their technology advisor, so 
in that in itself is an achievement, uh, but it really didn't mean anything to start off in the end there. Um, so I aided in building a million pounds physical lab and network, which we then set up to be virtual with the aim, so lo any local markets, such as UK, uh, India, just to name two, Germany, they could request a virtual machine environment, we would set that up, they would then test different products in that environment. Uh, the aim for that lab is to be used across departments. Uh, we all are participated in the Capture the Flag tournament. Uh, we had one of the best friendships I could have possibly asked for, to be honest. Uh, and assisted and coordinated in a dashboard project. So, <coughs> as a bit of a visual assistance, and David, you can uh, be a lovely assistant here. Come on down. So, to explain how, um, in a better way, because I know some people are visual learners, you will be side of the fence, yep. so you'll be on the defense. I'll go on the offense. Okay. All right. <laughs> so as you, as you can see, the attack could happen at any time. Um, and not only that, but he had to be prepared for it, so the defences had to be prepared because um, we don't know how big of a threat we were potentially facing. Thank you. So one of the um, fun experiences I had working for Vodafone was a, a trip to Porth Kernel, which is in Cornwall. It's one of the old cable and wireless centres. Uh, it's now been turned into a museum for about cable and wireless. And I was down there with uh, Gary um, to essentially help and work with the museum of how Vodafone could potentially make it a bit more future. So we were looking at how Vodafone could implement something to make it a bit more like up to date, a bit more modern per se, while it's still incorporating all of the traditional stuff and what's already there. So we're bringing it to how the times are changing. Um, and yeah, uh, one of the great things and um, experiences I had was actually listening to the first time reading of a script about Porth Kernel and Cable and Wireless and the history behind it and how it was a, a area where it was for the wire, the people who were setting up all the wires that go up underground, uh, underground and under the water. So as you can see on the image, it is a map of all the uh, cable and wireless network, and they it, it's how they like laid all the cables across the Atlantic and connected the different continents together. So moving on to the projects, uh, as I've briefly covered the lab network, uh, so it's a physical network in the data center which was all the boxes, we then had to make that virtualized so that way it's easier to access. Uh, and it was all for internal testing of different products. That way we could work out if it actually is suitable, how much it works and potentially if it failed in the environment so the environment wasn't prepared for it or the environment had something that it, it was a conflict of interest. So we, we needed to deal with it using a lab rather than in production, as what's worse than having a whole system crash in production. So, Capture the Flag, um, it was a two day event where a lot, well a few, a handful of us stayed up during the night and we worked together, which is frowned upon in the environment, uh, but we worked together and hinted at ways to get flags. We didn't ever tell each other the actual flag, so we did no flag sharing, but we did help each other learn new uh, aspects. I worked with a pen tester who was very good at what he does, and he showed us how to get quite a few of the flags. I showed him a few of them, where he didn't actually think about just running the, the 
challenge and puzzle through autopsy. Love that tool. It will tell you the flag. Like, if there is a flag, easy to find, it will tell you. Absolutely love that tool. Hang on that. Um, and it is an open source tool. The uh, Mammoth team consisted of a penetration tester, an apprentice, Connor, myself as the intern, so we're pretty handicapped with a couple of us being apprentice or an intern, but the as of the three of us, we managed to work through it pretty effectively. Uh, and we were called, uh, it's not on there, I thought it was, uh, but we were called um, Crush Override from the movie Hackers. All the team names were picked by the event organisers, and I don't think anyone complained about the team name. Don't think anyone, or at least that I'm aware of, complained about any of the names because we're all a bunch of nerds. Let's be honest. So one of the projects uh, was the dashboard for CERT. Uh, yes, I'm aware that's a FireEye project uh, dashboard and not a Vodafone one. That's purely because it didn't pan out as what we expected. And we've had to, I believe it's been adapted for a different project, which is ongoing and I wasn't part of. So I wasn't going to show somebody else's work and say it. I worked on it when I haven't. Uh, but we did regular meetings, which helped the team greatly. Uh, quite often the meetings were literally just a quick rundown of either what we're doing and then the rest of the time we were just talking about casual stuff, the everyday to day life. And it was a way to unwind but sort of thing, but then we were still making sure we were covering what we needed to do. Uh, the trial proved to be extremely successful in the development of the tool, I believe that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and yes, I was helping with this project for Cyber Defence and for the manager of CERT, which is over there, Gary Hoskin. Um, and that is his LinkedIn, should any of you try and look him up for any stuff. Uh, so yeah, the dashboard project, just to go briefly over it, uh, I was the project coordinator. I was helping to make sure we tried to match the deadlines and we matched what were, what work was required. I was assigned that role purely because at dinner table, I could easily spin my chair around, have a conversation with the manager and often be told if I wanted to continue uh, eating the food that I was having and not have it thrown at me, I should really just be quiet at times. <laughs> We learned that we needed an SQL database to do what we wanted to do. We learned we needed API keys and a better understanding of what the targets were. The problems we had were team members changing uh, roles. So one team member left halfway through the, like towards the end of the project. Um, and because it was an incident response team, we had the issue of they had incidents to deal with rather than a small dashboard project. How this has helped me, uh, although I'm only in first year, it's helped me to start to come up with potential ideas for my dissertation. Uh, and I believe everyone will agree you've got to start sooner thinking about that rather than too late because a lot of people stress about it. Uh, it helped me with the first semester with a research coursework project we had where I just wrote about the dashboard project and did what it's then expanded into. It's helped me make new friends with the, within the industry and learn tools such as Power BI, Power Automate, PFSense, uh, Firewalls. Love them. They are my favourite firewalls to go for. Uh, so yeah, it's helped me with the coursework. So potential ideas that I could use is the dashboard tooling system, a, a lab network and how it can be built and improved upon. Uh, other tools that are used in businesses. Obviously, I would need to get a group, like an agreement with my former manager about it. If I was to potentially go down to other tools within the business. The tools that I've learned from it is autopsy, as I've covered, and how much I love autopsy. FTK imager. Um, so during the CTF, that was one that I heavily had to use. Uh, PFSense Firewall, it's open source. It's a very nice solution. ASXI clusters and boxes. Uh, it's a nice way to get virtual machines. 
and troubleshooting done right is one of my friends would call it. So you look at the OSI layer and you work out it, which way around is it? Is it actually the end user potentially having the problem? And then you, that's looking at the physical, but then you work your way through to work out where's the actual fault. Friendships, uh, ex obviously Xbox Gamer Chats, uh, people to vent anger and frustration to, they use it against me too. Uh, people to bounce ideas off, and people who could further assist my understanding and knowledge. So what you could learn, uh, depending on the role and team, it, it really is, as the team could potentially not be fully established, it could also be, or it could be fully established and you're coming in as an outsider, so you need to find a way to get into the group and into the fold to then be able to work best on it. Um, so for me, I believe that the best internships require an understanding of where you want to be. So I knew going into it, I was wanting to be either an instant responder or a pen tester. I left it, not sure which of the two areas, but I had a better understanding of the two different departments and teams. A mentor who believes in you, uh, Connor was one of the best mentors I've had. He always, whenever I, day or night, he would message and he would make sure I was all right. He would also make sure that I knew what I was doing when I was assigned to work. And if I ever struggled, I could message him. My manager, Stuart, um, he trusted me to just get on with the work. And whenever I was having a problem or needed a bit more help, I could call out and he was there willing to support. He would also help the team, get the team involved and get the team on board. Any questions? Thank you for listening. Um.